Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create these CSS card designs, but most importantly, I'm actually going to talk through how to create any style of CSS card you want, so you can create any card and not just the ones I show you. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project center. And today we're going to start with CSS cards. As you can see, this is the final version of what we're going to be creating. We have a few different card styles with borders and shadows and so on. But to get started, we just need to create a simple index.html page. Hit exclamation point and enter, and that's going to populate all of this for you if you're using VS Code and Emmet. And if you're unfamiliar with how this works, I have a tutorial on Emmet linked in the cards and description down below. Now the next thing I want to do before we get any further is I want to use a custom font because the default font looks kind of ugly. So all we've done is gone to Google Fonts and search for Open Sans. I'll include a link for this down in the description below. We just want to scroll down to where we have regular 400, select this style, and then at the top we can click this button. And here we can copy over a bunch of link tags which are going to allow us to use that font inside of our page. So now we have the font linking, and then what we need to do is just create a simple CSS file. So we're going to say styles.css. We want to make a selector here, and this selector is just going to be for the everything. We're going to do a before, and we're going to do an after selector. We just want to set our font. So if we scroll down here, you can see we have this font family we can just copy over and paste. And now it's going to set the font for everything in our application to this open sans font, and we're going to fall back to sans serif. Now if we just go over to our index HTML, we make sure we include a link tag for CSS, that's for that style sheet we just created, and include some font on our page. And now we open this up with live server, you'll see over here we now have that custom open sans font. If I go over to my style CSS and I comment this out, you can see that now that font is gone. So this is just a way to make our website look a little bit better. Now the very first thing that I want to do is I actually want to just create a basic card. So instead of our body, instead of just having this text here, we're going to create a div that has the class of card. And inside of here, we're just going to put some text. This is going to be the most basic style of card. So we'll just type lorem 20 and that just gives us 20 words of random text. And now you can see we have that random text on our screen. And I'll just zoom it in a little bit so we can see that. So now in order to create a card inside of our CSS, we can just come in here and select that card class. And really a card in CSS is essentially a box, generally with a white background, that has some kind of border around it, some rounded edges, and some padding. So the first thing we want to do is we want to specify a background. In our case, we'll use white. Now this isn't going to look like it does much because our background of our body is white. But if we change the background of our body to a color such as black, and make sure we set that as the background, and we save, you can now see that this has a white background, while if we remove this white background, you can see there's now no background at all, which is why this is really important to include on your card. Let's put this back to how we had it before. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually put in some padding. So we'll just say our padding is going to be one REM and save, and now you can see there's some space around where it used to be. If we remove that, you can see it's pushed against the edges. Now with the padding, it just gives us some space around all the edges, and that's where we can add in a simple border. Let's just say a simple one pixel solid border. And we're just gonna use this 777 color. This is kind of like a grayish color. And as you can see, we now have a border around our thing. So it's starting to look a bit more like a card, but we wanna round these edges to really give it that card appearance. So we'll just say border radius. And we'll just say 0.25 REM, for example. Now when we save, you can see it now has rounded edges. And this already looks a lot like a card. If we come over here and we scroll down, you can see it looks very similar to this card right here that we have. So already this is looking very similar, but you'll notice it's just some plain text in the middle. And generally when you have a card, you're gonna have like a header section at the top, you're gonna have some body, and you're gonna have a footer, which has maybe some buttons. So inside of our index HTML, let's do that. We're gonna create a card header. This is gonna be for our title. For example, we'll say one, two, three, main street for our basic thing. Then we're gonna have a card body. And this card body is just going to be all the text. So let's put our text inside of there. So now we have our text inside of our card body. And then finally, we're gonna have a card footer. And this is where we're gonna put our buttons. So we're gonna have a simple button here. And this is just gonna say details. And we're gonna copy that down and it's gonna say contact seller. Cause we can imagine that this is like some kind of site like Zillow where we're selling a bunch of houses. As you can see here, we have our houses, we have a details and a contact seller button. And this details is going to be a darker shade. So we're just gonna give this here a class of button so we can style this. And then here we're gonna give this a class of button, but this is going to be an outline button. So we'll say button, and we're gonna make this an outline button just so it doesn't quite stand out as much. As you can see, we have our two different styles of buttons here. So now with that done, we can actually go and make this look a little bit better. The first thing I wanna do is come in here. I'm gonna select our card header. And inside of the card header, I just wanna change our font size. I wanna make it 1.5 REM. So this is going to be a larger font for our header. And then I wanna put some spacing. So we'll say margin on the bottom is going to be 0.5 REM. That's just going to space out our header from our body of our text right here. And I wanna do the same thing with our footer. So for our card footer, all I wanna do is I wanna say margin on the top. 
I want to set it to one REM. Just give us a little bit of extra space between our text and our buttons down here. And the reason I'm putting these margins on the footer and on the header is because let's say that we don't have a footer. We just don't have a footer on this card. Well, what's going to happen is all that extra margin is part of the footer, so it's not going to add on to the actual size of the card. While if instead we did our card body and we, for example, said that our margin on the bottom here was going to be one REM and we remove that margin from our footer, you'll see now we have this extra space at the bottom of our card, which shouldn't be there. And when we have a footer, it's going to look fine. As you can see here, it looks fine. But the problem is when we don't have a footer, it has that extra space, which is why I don't put the margin on the body itself. Instead, all I want to do inside the body is we're just going to take our font size and we're going to make it a little bit smaller, maybe 0.8 REM. And that looks a little bit small, so let's actually change it to 0.9 REM. Put this margin back here for the footer, and as you can see, that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually style out our buttons. So we can just say here we have our button, and our button is going to have some type of background. And this background is going to be a specific color, which we're going to say HSL 200, 50%, and 50%, which is going to give us this interesting blue color, as you can see. And we're going to get rid of the border, so we'll say border none. That's going to look pretty good. And let's change our color to a white color. So we'll say color is white, so our text stands out a little bit better. Now the next thing I want to do is add in some padding. So we'll say our padding here is going to be 0.5 EM and 0.75 EM. And the reason here that I'm using EM instead of REM is because I want the actual padding to scale with my font size. So when I change my font size here to 1 REM, you can see that the padding scales with it, while if I used REMs here, the padding is not going to scale with it as well, which is why EMs are almost always better when dealing with buttons and things like that where you want it to scale with your font size. And again, I have a full video on the differences between REM and EM. You can check in the cards and description. Now just to round out the rest of these buttons, we want to add in a border radius. So we'll say our border radius is going to be 0.25 EM, again using EMs. And we're going to make sure here that our cursor is set to pointer, so when we hover it, you can see that it gives us that nice little pointer cursor. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to set a hover state for our button. So we can say button, and when we hover our button, or when we focus on our button, so when we have our focus state, we just want to change the background. So we'll say that our background here is going to be that same HSL 200 with 50%. And instead of here, we're going to have our lightness be set to 60%. So it's just going to be a slightly lighter blue color, but it's going to be the same otherwise. So when we hover, you can see nothing changes. The reason for that is I forgot to put a comma here after 200. So now when I hover, you can see it gets that lighter color. And I love using HSL, and I have an entire video on HSL. I'll link in the cards and description for you. But continuing onwards, now we want to do our outline button. So we can say button, and this is going to be for that outline class. So here, all we want to do is take our background and remove it. So we're going to say background none, and that's going to get rid of the background, which is great. But now what we need to do is we need to take our border, and we need to add in a border. So we'll say border is one pixel solid, and we're going to use here that same color. But instead of copying this color from here, and pasting it down here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called the color, and it's going to contain this color. So we'll just say our color variable is this color, and then to access that variable, we'll just say var, and we'll say color. Now we can access that color anywhere, same thing down here. I can say var color, and that's going to work exactly the same. And now if I need to change this, for example, to a green color, I can do it in one spot, and it's going to work everywhere. This is a really great thing to do. Now the last thing I need to do is add our color here, which again is going to use that color variable, and save, and now you can see we have the outline version and the solid version of our button. And if you're unfamiliar with these CSS variables, I have a full video on it. I'll link in the cards and description for you. Now, the last thing I need to do for our buttons is just add a little effect for our hover and for our focus. So we'll say button, button outline, focus. And here, all I want to do is I just want to change our background. I don't want to make our background very similar to this cover color, but I want to make it a really light version. We'll just say, for example, 90%. So now when I hover, you can see that it looks like it's being hovered because it has that background showing up behind it, which is a similar color to our blue, just a very light version of it. Now lastly, I just want to put a little extra space between our buttons. So this is a really neat trick you can do, is if you have two elements, you always want to space out from one another. If you have more than one, you can say button plus, and then again, put our button class, and here we'll just say margin on the left is going to be 0.25 REM. And as you can see, that's going to add some space. If we change this to 0.5 REM, you can see the space gets larger, 5 REM, even larger. And the reason that this works is it's saying if you have a button directly followed by another button, put some space on the left of the second button. This is a really handy CSS selector that you can use. And if you're kind of unfamiliar with these fancy, you know, plus signs CSS selectors, I have a full CSS selector cheat sheet. I'll link down in the description for you that you can download. It's going to cover all those complex selectors. So at this point, we've covered the most basic style of card that you can design. It's a card that has a header, it has some body, it has some things, some buttons that you can press, and it has a solid border around it. 
but this is generally not the best style of card you can sign. If we go over here, you can see we have that border version of the card right here, but also below it, it might be a little hard to see, you can see we have a shadow version. Up here, you can see the same thing. We have this card that has a shadow going around it instead of the border. And personally, I think the shadow almost always looks better, so I wanna show you how to create that as well. So let's go into our index.html, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this card that we have, and I'm just gonna copy it down below, and we're gonna say card shadow right here. This is going to be for the shadow version of our card. And instead of our CSS, all we need to do is come all the way up here and we can select our card that has the card shadow class. And here I wanna remove our border. So we'll say border none, that gets rid of the border for us. And instead I wanna replace this with a box shadow. Now box shadow is a bit confusing on how it works. The first number you put in is going to be the X offset. So how far right or left your X offset of your shadow is. In our case, we want it to be dead center. So we're gonna put zero. Now the next number is the Y offset. And generally when you create a shadow, you want it to be darker on the bottom and lighter on the top. So we're gonna offset downwards by two pixels in the Y direction. Next comes the blur. So kind of how far out your shadow expands. In our case, we'll just do five pixels, pretty good number. And spread is kind of like how far your shadow stays the same dark color. In our case, we don't want any spread because spread kind of adds like a border. So we're gonna set our spread to zero. And then we want to have essentially a very dark color. So we're gonna choose black. But we wanna make it mostly transparent. So we're gonna use 0.2 right here. And if I save, you can now see we have a shadow where it's kind of dark on the bottom here, but on the top it's lighter. And this would be easy to see if I just comment out this card up here. You can see we now just have our shadow card where there's not very much shadow at all on the top, but it's much darker on the bottom. And that's again, because this offset here, if I change this to zero, you can see now my shadow is the same on the top and the bottom. And generally that just doesn't look quite as good as having more shadow on the bottom and less on the top. Now let's go back to where we had two different cards inside of our thing. So let's just uncomment that. So now we have two cards. And what I wanna do is I wanna be able to style these cards so that they actually are laid out well. Because right now what happens, let's just zoom this out a little bit. You can see these cards are very wide. You know, as I keep zooming out, they're incredibly wide and I really don't want them to be that wide. So what I could do is, you know, I could come into my card and I could say max width, here's, you know, 300 pixels. And now when I zoom in, you can see that they're always 300 pixels wide or they fill the full screen if my screen is less than 300 pixels. That works, but sometimes you need your cards to be a little bigger, a little smaller. So instead what I like to do is I like to put them inside of a container. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this entire thing inside of a container called the card grid. And we're gonna use CSS grid to lay out these cards. Now, if you're unfamiliar with CSS grid, I have an entire tutorial super in depth that covers it. I'll link in the cards in the description below for you, but we're just gonna cover the very basics of how it works. So inside of here, we're gonna select our card grid class. and we're gonna set the display to grid. And this is gonna lay things out in a grid and we're gonna specify our columns. And essentially what we wanna do is we wanna have an automatic number of columns where the minimum size is going to be 300 pixels. So what we'll do is we say repeat, we wanna make it automatic. So we're just gonna say auto fill. We're gonna say min max. So our minimum size is 300 pixels. And our maximum size is one FR, which means it'll grow to be as large as it needs to be. So now when I save, you can see that our cards are laid out. And as my screen changes in size, you can see that they get wider and wider. And I do have an issue here where it's doing auto fill. Let's change this to auto fit instead. So now if we expand our screen size, you can see we don't have that issue where it got smaller. But the important thing is as we get really, really small, you can see once we get below 300 pixels, it now goes on to the next line. So it's going to essentially put as many as it can on one line. And if they get too small, it's going to move them on to the next line. That's really great. Now, the last thing I wanna do is just add some space. So we're gonna say gap is one REM, and that's just going to put some space between them. And then if our cards are different heights, so for example, we have extra text inside of this one. Let me just add a bunch of extra text. You can see that this card is got a little bit extra space at the bottom. If I copy this and paste it down, it's gonna become really obvious. You see all this extra space here. It looks kind of bad. So we're gonna say align items, flex start, and that's just gonna make it so it's always at the top and it doesn't expand to fill the full height. And let me remove all that extra text. We don't really need that. And as you can see, these cards look pretty good. So at this point, we've covered how to create a dark border. We've covered how to create a shadowed border. And we've also covered how you can kind of create a grid to put your cards in. The next thing I want to talk about is how you can actually create cards that have images at the top. As you can see, these cards have an image at the top. It's a really professional and clean look, and it's something you're going to see all the time. And there's a lot of nuance into how to make this actually work correctly. So this is pretty complex, but I'm going to cover it exactly how it needs to work. So what we want to do is we're going to come in here and create a brand new card. I'm just going to copy the card with the shadow because I think the shadows look better in my opinion. And instead of having this header with text inside of it, instead we're going to put an image inside of here and this image is just going to have a source. Now in order to get all these images, I'm using Unsplash. As you can see here, we can search for a bunch of different house images. And what you just need to do is you need to take a URL. I'm going to paste one in here. It's just HTTPS colon backslash backslash source.unsplash.com slash, and you just copy the ID. So if I click on an image up here, you can see we have the ID and I can just copy and paste that ID and put it inside of here if I want. So for example, this is this house right here. For example, I'll just copy this ID, paste it into here. 
Now, when I come over here, you can see that that house is showing up. It's quite large right now. We're going to fix that. But as you can see, that's the exact house I got from my Unsplash page right here. And you can choose any houses you want. It really doesn't matter. Now, the last thing I want to do to be able to say that this is a card image, I'm going to just put a card image class on my header. So I know that this is a header that contains an image instead of a header that contains text. And now I can come down inside of here and actually start styling this. So I can say card header dot card image to select all of those headers that have an image inside of them. Now here, all I want to do is I want to set my overflow to hidden. And that's just going to make it so that the image no longer overflows its container. That's really important. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to select our card header. I want to select the card image. And I actually want to get the image directly inside of that. So we can say IMG here to get that image tag. And importantly, I want to change the display here to block so I can actually change the width and height. And I want to set the width to 100%. So it's going to be a 100% width of our container. And already that looks a lot better, but not quite what we're looking for. The next thing I want to do is want to set an aspect ratio. So I want to make sure our aspect ratio is 16 by 9. This is a super cool CSS property where now our image has been changed to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But you'll notice it looks a little bit scrunched. The house kind of got scrunched downwards as it changed the size of the image. So what I want to do is change my object fit here and I want to change this to cover. What this is going to do is it's going to make it so that the aspect ratio of the image is always maintained. So if the image is, for example, 17 by nine, then the aspect ratio is going to be maintained and it's just going to overflow the edge of our container. And this is important because there are certain images here. For example, this house is a very tall image while this one is a very wide image. So using object fit cover, I can always make sure that the actual aspect ratio of the image is maintained so it doesn't distort and stretch the image. This one is already mostly rectangular, so there's not a huge amount of distortion that shows up, but it does make it look a little bit better. Now, another thing I want to do is I want to specify a max height on here of 200 pixels. And the reason for this is that as our screen starts to get a little bit bigger and wider, so as we get wider and wider and wider, you can see our image is growing essentially. And if we didn't have this max height here, you can see it gets very tall. And as it gets wider and wider, you can see that this image gets taller and taller and shorter and shorter. But we never want it to get too tall or too wide, which is why we're setting that max height of 200% on our image. Now, another thing that's important is I want to make sure that we always center our image. So we can say our object position here, if we just get object, whoops, position, I want to change that to center. And that means it's always going to focus on the center of the image. So no matter how small or large our image gets, it's always focused on the center, which is generally where the house is going to be. And this so far looks pretty good. But the main problem we have is all the padding around the edge of our card. Remember up here in our card, we set a padding of one REM. And that works great for basic cards, but when you want stuff to go all the way to the edge, like our image here, the padding actually cannot be defined on the card. Instead, we need to remove this padding from our card, and now you can see the image touches the edge, but everything else is also touching the edge, which looks really bad. So instead, I'm going to specify a custom variable called padding, which we set to 1 REM. Then inside of the header here, all I want to do is I want to say our padding here is going to be equal to that padding variable. And if I save, you're going to notice it looks mostly good, but it's going to give us some padding on the bottom as well. So I'm going to say our padding on the bottom, whoops, padding bottom is going to be equal to zero. And that gets rid of that extra space on the bottom. Now, an important thing to note though, is inside of our image version, I want to actually have no padding. So here our padding is going to be set to zero. So if it's just a text version here, we have padding just fine. But if it's an image version, we have no padding. And now immediately you'll notice one issue. Our rounded corners are now no longer here. Our image does not have those rounded corners. To fix this on our card, just set our overflow to hidden. And this is going to make it since our card has rounded borders and the image overlaps those rounded borders, you can see that now we have rounded borders on our image. Now all we need to do is add this padding to the rest of our page. So down here on our body, we're going to set our padding is equal to zero and then our padding variable. And that's because we want our vertical padding to be zero, which is this first number, and our horizontal padding to be the padding for our card. As you can see, it pushes that text in on the sides. And then our footing, same thing. Our padding is going to be our padding variable. And we just want to remove the padding on the top and set that to zero, just because we don't want extra space on the top. And now immediately our card looks so much better, but now we have a full size image here instead of that smaller image. Now the only thing left to do is to do this nice little zoom in effect. As you can see on these images, we're giving it a little zoom effect when we hover over the card. It just looks awesome and professional. So we're going to add that in and it's surprisingly simple. So select our card header and we want to get the card image. We want to get the image inside of it. And the important thing is we want to do this anytime we hover over our card. So we'll just say card hover. And anytime we hover our card, the card inside of it with the header is the one that we're going to zoom. And all I want to do is I want to take our transform here. I want to take our scale and I want to just do a very small zoom. We'll do like 1.025. So now you can see when I hover, it actually doesn't do anything right now. And that's because I put dot image here instead of image. 
Now, if I get rid of that, you can see that it's zooming in our image, which looks really good. But of course, we want it to be a smooth transition instead of just this jumpy animation. So to do that, we can say transition and we want to set our transition to 200 milliseconds. It's going to transition our transform property because that's the one that we want to change. And we're going to make it an ease in out. So now when we hover, you can see it has that nice, really slow zoom in effect, and it just looks really good. And it always stays centered on the image. Now to prove to you that all of this works really well, no matter the size of the image, I'm just going to copy this card one more time, paste it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our image. So here we're going to get that very tall vertical image. Let's copy the ID for this. We're going to paste that in. We're going to go back over to our page and whoops, this page. And you're going to see, even though that was a super tall image, it perfectly fits. It's the exact same size as the other image, and it still has that really cool zoom effect. It's centered on the actual house, and overall just looks really good. Since you made it to the end, you get the bonus shot of a sleeping dog, but it also means that you probably really enjoy CSS, which means you're going to love my CSS selector cheat sheet, which teaches you everything you need to know about every single CSS selector. It's completely free. I'm linking it down in the description below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.